This presentation examines the Z interval for a proportion and the minimum sample size needed for a given margin of error. So here's our goal. We want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion. Remember we use P to represent the population proportion. We want the margin of error to be 0 0.02 or less. A previous study tells us that the population proportion should be about 0.3. And we want the minimum sample size necessary to satisfy all these requirements. So we're looking for a confidence interval from mu. If that's the case, we use the following rule. We say p hat plus or minus z alpha by 2 square root of p hat q hat over n. The margin of error is this part. So in a sense, our formula is p hat plus or minus e, or p hat plus or minus the margin of error. And you've heard this term in political polling when they say one candidate has 40% of the vote but the margin of error is 5%. That means they don't know really what he has, but it's somewhere between 40 minus 5% and 40 plus 5%. That's what they expect. So in our example, a previous study told us P should be about 0.3. If we can assume our P hat is about 0.3, that can actually enable us to use a somewhat smaller n, which is cost effective. So our alpha divided by 2 is 0.025, and we want to use Minitab to find out what z alpha by 2 is. So our command is INVCDF. We're using 0.025. And of course, z is a normal 0, 1. And the number that comes back is negative 1.95996, or negative 1.96. We typically use the positive version of that, so that's what we will use for z alpha by 2. Okay, continuing. Here's our formula for the margin of error. The margin of error, e, is z alpha by 2 over p hat q hat over n. e will be 0 0.02, z alpha by 2 will be 1.96. p hat we're getting from our previous study, we're going to assume it's about 0.3. q hat then will be 0 0.7, 1 minus p hat, and n is what we're looking for. So those are the numbers plugged in, and we recognize that our next step is to solve for n. So here's our equation. In order to get rid of the square root, we're going to have to square both sides. So we square both sides. And now I want to solve for n. The simplest thing to do would be to multiply n on both sides, which would then give me this. And to isolate n, we'll divide both sides by 0.02 squared. And doing the computation, we get 2016.84. Now remember, we're determining the number in the sample. You cannot have a fraction in the sample. So we round up. Rather than saying 2016.84, we say that we have 2017 in our sample size. And our guess is, if we have 2017 in our sample size, our margin of error should be very, very close to 0.02. So let's check that. So we're using 2017 in our sample size. We want something in the neighborhood of 0.3. So I chose 610 out of 2017. And using this, we want to see what the margin of error is if we construct a 95% confidence interval. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to find that confidence interval, and we're going to use Minitab to see what that margin of error will be. So we're going to go to the Stat menu, and we're going to go to basic statistics, and we're going to go to one proportion. We want to plug those numbers in. So uh, we have three buttons here, samples and columns, summarized data, hypothesis test. We're going to go with summarized data. And we had 610 winners out of a total of 2017. And then we're going to go to options. And you have to remember that we have to use the interval based on the normal distribution. So our confidence level is 95. We're going to click the button for the test and interval based on the normal distribution. We're going to say OK, and we're going to say OK. So there is my confidence interval. The width of the confidence interval is 0.322 minus 0.282. So the width of the confidence interval is 0.04. And the width of the confidence interval is twice the margin of error, so the margin of error is 0.02. And that reinforces what we had done earlier. 
Okay, our next goal is to construct a 99% confidence interval for the population proportion. And this time we want the margin of error to be less than 0.035. But we have no information, and we want to figure out what the minimum sample size is. Well, in the last example, we used a p hat of 0.3 because we had some previous information that told us p hat likely was pretty close to 0.3. If you think about it, p hat times q hat, 0.3 times 0.7 would be 0.21. 0.4 times 0.6 would be higher, that would be 0.24. But the highest you could get would be 0.5 times 0.5 should be 0.25. So if you don't know anything, you just go with the thing that will give you the largest n, since it certainly could be 0.5. And in that case, the largest n will come from the fact that p hat and q hat both would equal 0.5. So in the event there's no previous information, this is what we assume. So here's our example. p, is, p hat is 0.5. We would like our margin of error to be about 0.035. A little bit less would be nice. Alpha is 0.05. And we have to find alpha divided by 2, or 0.01 divided by 2, 0.005. And we need to find z sub 0.005, and we'll do that with the mini tab. So I'm going to say inv cdf 0.005, semicolon is z distribution, which is normal, 0, 1. And what does it give me? Negative 2.576, and again, we usually use the positive version, which would be 0.975 or 2.576. That will be our z alpha by 2. We want to use this information in the computation. So our formula is E equals z alpha by 2 with p hat q hat over n. E, this time we want 0.035, z alpha by 2, 2.576, root 0.5.5 over n, and we want to solve for n. So we're going to do some algebra. Let's take a look. Step one, square both sides. Squared, squared, lose the square root. Step two, multiply n. Step three, divide both sides by 0.035 squared. And then do the computation. And we have 1354.2. Now, you don't want to round down, because if you round down, that will increase your margin of error. So typically, with these problems, we like to round up, because that will increase our likelihood of getting a margin of error a little bit smaller. But recognize there's a lot of rounding here, so we're very rarely exactly right in terms of what the margin of error will be. But again, let's go ahead and check it on Minitab. So we have 1355 is the n that we figured out earlier. And I picked a number that'll give us pretty close to 0.5, so we said 660 out of 1355. And here we want to get the 99% confidence interval we want to see if that confidence interval is going to do what? See if that confidence interval is going to have a margin of error close to what we were looking for. So let's do that. Let's go to Minitab and see how that is going to behave. 660 out of 1355. So we're going to go to Stat, Basic Statistics, One Proportion. And the numbers we had before are still there. So we're going to go ahead and put in 660 out of 1355. Go to Options. And this time, we do not want a 95% confidence interval. We want a 99% confidence interval. Make sure the button for the normal distribution is clicked because we're using a Z interval here. Saying OK, saying OK, and we get those numbers. So if we're looking for our width this time, the width would be, how wide is the confidence interval? 0.522 minus 0.452. And what will that give me? We're going to get 0.07. So if the width is 0.07, the margin of error is half that. The margin of error is exactly what we expected it to be. The margin of error is 0.035. OK, well, one thing we're going to finish with here is why do we use the minimum sample size? Well, if, if you do research, the research has to be approved by an institutional review board. And one thing they always ask is, are you doing this in a reasonable manner? Is it cost effective? Is it ethical? And are you using as few subjects as possible? And you could imagine the ethical reasons for a small n if you're doing animal studies. You don't want to use more than you have to. In economics, even with surveys, the more people you survey, the more expensive it's going to be.
So keeping n small is a good way to make sure that your research is following the standards that we want it to follow. But you also want to make sure that you get a margin of error that you can live with. And that concludes this lesson.